Oh, hell yeah. James Vanderbeek! How's things? Things are good. Yeah? Wow, things these are, are good. super close. These shoes are super similar. Look at that. Look at that, see? But yours are perforated for her pleasure. These exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta let the piggies breathe. That's man. right. Yeah. Um, how are things? Really good. Yeah. yeah. Fun to work on a Jason Reitman film? Oh, I'm just so excited to do that. Yeah. He's, he's one of those directors who is at the top of my list of people that I wanted to work with. Was it Juno or was it other things that you saw that really worked? Uh, up in the Air, Juno. Uh, Thank You for Smoking was yeah. the first time I really said, Who is this guy? The and then, Squad, man. The Merchant of Death. What a great, what a nuance, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, but every movie he's done, he's. Uh, it's just, it's gotten different types of storytelling. It's gotten stronger. It's gotten more subtle. It's really uh, just evolved so much every time out. What do you do when you know that you don't have a lot of lines, mm -hmm. but you have to carry some heavy weight in this film in key moments, yeah. but you do it without a lot of lines? Yeah. What's that mindset like for you? Yeah, I mean, you're always, uh, in any scene, you're always, you've got a full agenda and a full, even if you don't say much, um, there's always something that you want to do. There's something that you think might be going on. There's something that you want. This is, so um, you just kind of go through the checklist. And it's just a mental checklist. It's not even an emotional one. And, and what I realized later on in my career is that just by thinking about something critically, in character, um, you know, the scene plays and the emotion registers. It also helps to work with people like Kate Winslet. Yeah. <laughs> like at, <Yeah>. one point, <laughs> at one point, I was doing a scene with her, and I was just listening to her, just asking a question or two and just listening. And it was the coverage is on me, and one, somebody behind the monitor came up and said, "I love what you're doing." I thought, "I'm not doing anything." <laughs> but Kate then Winslet. I realized it's Kate Winslet. Like I don't have to. Like she, the whole scene is there on her face, and I'm just watching it. Right. So it's so. And I don't want to give away the film. I really want people to see this film. But you play this cop, and it, what's good about it is you play a cop who's doing a nice thing. But I'm not sure if you're just being a nice guy, if you're being a cop, right? It's this kind of yeah. thing that you do. Did you know the rest of the story? Did you read the whole script, or were you just reading you? No, I mean, I, I read the whole script. I mean, any time you get a role, you know, uh, of this size, which is a smaller role, I got about four scenes, um, your main goal is just to serve the, the movie. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. not, you don't want to come in and do, like, some kind of da 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 and then, you know, not fit in the movie at all. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I talked to Jason really briefly, and basically we said, this is just a guy, a good guy trying to do his job. Yeah. Well, that's a job, if, if done right in your right situation, there's a lot of stability to that, right? You see these guys age over the years as police officers. Your folks still come from careers, if you think about it, where there wasn't a long term. If, if you imagine a dancer and a baseball player, yeah, right? Shortened yeah. careers, in a sense. Yeah. Did you learn a lot from, from what life was going to be like watching that? Well, yeah, I mean, they both, my dad was a professional baseball player before I was born. Um, and then when I was born, he got a job at the phone company. You were born, he goes to the phone company? Yeah. Is yeah, that I, a guy was... giving, giving up his dream kind of thing? Well, yeah, he was, uh, he was playing for the AA Waterbury Dodgers in Waterbury, Connecticut, which is where I'm from, yeah. uh, where I was born, actually. And then, uh, yeah, he thought, you know what? You know what? He actually told me a story. He came back from spring training or something, and I was just an infant, and I didn't recognize him. And he thought, all right, time to, time to get a job where I can be home. And so he, uh, yeah, he interviewed for the phone company, and he was out jogging. He was, he was, he was going to go out jogging uh, to get in shape. And the phone rang, and it was the phone company that said, you've got the job. He said, all right, great. Hung up the phone. Didn't go jogging that day. No more training for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, even the stuff you put on social network, you, there's a lot of what you present that is about forgiveness and acceptance, and there's a love and an openness. Has this always been a part of who you are? I think so. I think so. But... It, but, but uh, once you become a father, you become a lot more conscious of what you're actually putting out in the universe. Yeah. You know, you look at, I mean, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to do a job that I love. I'm lucky enough to, uh, to be paid for it, enough to provide for my family. Um, but I also, you know, people watch what I do. Yeah. When I first started acting, to me, it was just the doing of it. I loved it. It was, I, I didn't know how to not do it. Yeah. Like I, um, and I was able to, to, to find some success at it. And then the fame thing happened. And my first reaction to that was, whoa, 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 just leave me alone. Like, let me, let me do my thing. I don't want to have to be famous and act. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which sounds really silly, but, um, but I just really like the acting well, part of it. You were young, man. I mean, I was. I was 20 years old when I, when I got my first big dose of it. And it happened 
really quickly. Stick around, we have more with James right after this. When we continue with James, the advice he got from NPH himself, Neil Patrick Harris. Gotta go to work. You gotta <laughs> play a demo on your show. Oh well, you know it's not a show; it's the news. Right. So you can be like, "Hey, did you hear? There's some news. There's this rad band you guys should check out," and then play it. Or just like the first three songs. There's a. Uh... That's James Vanderbilt doing his best version of you. As a Canadian, <laughs> what was your basis for a Canadian in, on How I Met Your Mother? Um, I had gotten this call to, you know, to do this guest spot. Uh, they wanted me to play a fat, uh, balding, former Mr. Teen Winnipeg. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, well, obviously, I'm the natural choice. Right, of course, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd worked in Winnipeg a little bit, and I, uh, there was one guy that I worked with who had this crazy accent. And so I literally called him. <laughs> and then just kind of did my own cartoonish version of it. Did you, now you and NPH talk on that show? We did. Yeah? We did, Did you actually. talk about your, your, your similar experiences? We did. What was that like? Um, I'd known Neil for, for a number of years. Uh, you know, it's really funny. There's this kind of brotherhood of people who had success very early on on a show yeah. of which they were the title character. I talked to Fred Savage about this. He was on the Wonder Years. I talked to Sarah Geller about it. I talked to Mark Paul Gossler about it. Um, and what I remember Neil saying, actually, was, have you learned, he asked me, have you learned how to have fun with the character yet, with the, with the whole, you know, past legacy thing? And my answer, and this is, my answer to him at the time was, oh, yeah, I was making fun of that even when I was on the show. And he was, I remember him going, uh-huh. And he let it go. And I don't think I realized that I still had a lot further to go, you know, down that road. And he was kind of telling me in his own subtle way that, you know what, embrace it a little more. And then years later, I, you know, I did. There's a moment when Priestley, Jason Priestley, who has a similar experience, was on, yeah. our, on our show. When that show ended, I, I, I just sort of, I, 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 just, I didn't reset fast enough, so I was, so, it was it was it was it, it was a difficult time for me because of that. It's amazing how common the experience is, isn't it? It's crazy how common how many common markers there are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, among among everybody. <laughs> Frankie Muniz did a, a guest spot on uh, on Apartment Twenty Three, last show I did, and uh, and Kristen Ritter was in the van listening to Frankie and, and me talk. You, right? Yeah, I was playing this bizarro, demented version of myself on the show. Um, but Frank and I were talking about it, and then uh, Mark Paul and I were talking in a van on a different oh, day, and Kristen was in the van. She's like, oh, my God, what, do you guys share notes? Like, <laughs> it's the same frickin' conversation you guys have. I was like, well, yeah. When we had Josh on, uh, he said that in, there was a moment in his life where Katie didn't talk to him, and then all of a sudden he got this phone call from her oh, yeah. after the divorce. Did you have any of that? <laughs> He's like, I just got a phone call out of nowhere from I her. I actually did just get a phone call out of nowhere, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think we all got a phone call out of nowhere. What was that yeah. conversation? I don't, I don't want you to tell what it was, but that feeling. Um, it was just nice. She sounded really good. She sounded really good and, and, and happy. I yeah. wondered what, you know, when you guys go through that experience together, not just in ways you can relate to on other shows, but when you actually were the ones all together, if when everybody's life takes off, and gets more interesting or more varied, yeah. how you guys feel about it if you're not in contact. Is it a, do you feel like you're missing something with the sibling? No, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like catching up with somebody you went to high school with. Yeah. You know, you, you have this shared experience um, that feels unique, and then everybody goes off and they have their own life, and they have their own kids and jobs and careers, and, um, and you know, you, you touch base less and less the further out you get from it. Yeah. Um, but every time you do, you're, you're just, there's a, it's always nice to be able to be happy for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Let's play a little game with you, all right? Yeah. It's called Vander Lemmas. Vander what? Vander Lemmas. I'm going to give you okay. a, a dilemma. All right. Or a Vander Lemma. Okay. And you're going to have to tell me how you handle it. Okay. Crowded lifeboat. A ship is sunk and 20 people are crowded into a boat yes. that was designed for 10. Yes. As water starts to pour into the boat, you realize the load will have to be lightened. Uh-huh. What do you do? I throw out all the ugly people. <laughs> 
Speed 3, yes. the third and not at all real installment of Speed film series. Oh. A train is out of control, barreling towards five people that have been tied to the tracks. Mm -hmm. You can push the lever or lever that changes it to a different track uh -huh. where only one person is tied. Yes. What do you do? I call in my stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you, man. Really good to see you. It's it's a pleasure. Pleasure. We'll be right back. Great. Thank you.